Hey there, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show. This is a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So this is the episode that I do every Sunday called This Week. It just pretty much chronicalizes everything or categorizes everything that we're doing in uh, for the channel on This Week. Um, I like to do it every week just to give people some heads up about what I'm planning to do. It's also a very good organizational skill for myself. I, I follow the list and try to remember everything that I'm supposed to be doing. Otherwise, if I just try to go randomly, sometimes I forget things there, or um, I tell myself I have more time than I actually have, or I put things off. But this way, it forces me to get down to business and... Uh, also helps you to try to decide what things you want to see or when you might want to see them or when they're coming out. There's people that like that kind of thing. I'm one of those people. Okay, so for this week, which is week 40, uh, which will fall between April the 16th to April the 22nd, we have five, five regular shows going on, plus we have the series, and I may do some more of what's new. I did do one last week. I had actually planned to do uh, more than that, but um, the heat, oh, wow, just knocked me out a couple days when I made a video, and then after I looked at it, I said, I can't publish this, I don't even know what I'm saying. So I had to erase it and start again. So, you know, sometimes I get so tired, I haven't got a clue what I'm saying. So there's no point in putting a video out that, that I'm not present for. So I took that one off and got rid of it. And we're gonna start again. So anyways, um. For this week, we have, of course, this show, which will chronalize everything. And then the next show up will be tonight, which will be Ben's album challenge. Ben has given me an interesting album. Uh, this is a band that I'm aware of. I've known about um, a lot of the kind of more heavy metal, metal oriented uh, people that who, whose channels I listen to or shows I watch to try and learn a bit more about heavy metal. Um, have suggested this uh, band quite a bit and Ben has now put an album out there by them so now I'm forced to listen to them which is what I like so he's chosen a band called Skull Fist the album I'm just going to make sure I can read it properly is Chasing the Dream so that will come out for Ben's album challenge uh, tonight uh, I've kind of listened to this a bit but I'm going to give it a serious listen to after uh, I'm done my videos for today. Okay, the other show, which is our Monday night look back at a classic rock album. For those of you who are aware, every Monday I put out an episode of a classic rock album that I consider to be a good one, at least a good one. Um, it's got to be at least about 15 years or older before I consider it a classic album. And it has to be a reasonably good album. I, I I tend to not go with anything under a two here. Like if it's just an album that people know of, I'm not going to put it out if I don't think much of it. There's no point to doing that. So I don't do that. So pretty much it's a two or higher. Uh, not too many twos either if once in a while we get a two. And so the album that I'm choosing to do for this week is this one, Kiss Destroyer. Probably should have done this a long time ago, but... I kept putting it off. I, I actually, when I started this, I thought I'm gonna do a kiss, video, a kiss one this week because I haven't done any for so long. And uh, I realized that I've neglected them because uh, of the uh, series in which I did the Paul Stanley, Ace Freely dynamic duo thing. I thought, you know what? I should give them a little more attention. It's just that uh, with all the infighting and bickering amongst them, especially lately between Ace and Paul, I just, these guys, they just, you know, Kiss is one of those bands. You either love them or you hate them. There's very few people on the fence with this band. I'm starting to go, I was, at one time I loved them. My walls of all my room was, wasn't a square inch without a Kiss poster on it. From about the time I discovered them when I was about 11 or 12, right up till I was probably... 15 or 16, I was enamored with them to the point that you couldn't tell me nothing wrong about them. 
well, at times it changed. And, you know, I, I recognize, although that music was great, I did love that music, and I will never stop loving that music. The band themselves have just really kind of uh, pushed themselves out the door a lot for me. Um, I, I just don't want to hear anything more from any of them, none of them. Not even my beloved Ace Freely. I don't want to hear from him, Peter, Paul, or Gene ever again. I don't want to know nothing that they're saying about each other. I don't care. It's the music that I love, or I did love. It's not even as, I don't even love it as much as I used to because I get tired of listening to this stuff. However, this was the album that I wanted first. This was the album that to me was the beginning. I, I love the cover of this album. I love the music on this album. It was the big album for me. Um, it was my first one though. Kiss Alive ended up being my first one for just because of the specifics of the situation. This one I asked for for Christmas that year and my parents gave me Boston's debut album and I didn't listen to it for three years. I was so pissed off. I didn't I put it in the cupboard and I never wanted to see it. I thought, why would they give me such a piece of crap when I wanted this? It's funny how things have changed. Now, I now love that Boston album and I don't love this one as much as I used to. So times do change. Feelings about things change. This was easily my favorite Kiss album when it came out for the longest time. And it's moved down quite a bit. It's gone from what I would have called my favorite one of my favorite albums down to like a level two now and back in that day i didn't have any masterpiece albums and stuff so probably would have been at the time but at this time it's not but i still like the album a lot still got a lot of good stuff on it so that's the album we're going to be doing for look back at a classic rock album this week so on to um episode four for the week which comes out wednesday which is my favorites this is a kind of a popular show um a lot of people either cite this as their favorite show on the, the channel or one of their top favorites. Um, I, I get a lot of views and it's because it's so varied. You know, I try to make it so that I'm not just doing a top 10 this or a top 25 this. I do other things and today, this week we're going to do, um, this is kind of a top 10 but not really. It's going to be my 10 must own progressive rock albums and a lot of people do this a lot of channels will do this I put it off because there was one particular one I didn't have I have it so I've decided that um, if uh, if you're going to do a must own rock albums and you don't have them it doesn't really say much about what you're doing right so I now have all 10 of the albums we'll discuss them there's not going to be any particular order um, Maybe I'll go through them alphabetically, I'm not sure, but I will be talking about those 10 albums. People seem to like this kind of thing, talking about these albums that they really, you know. And I'm the same way, I like hearing about stuff that I really like and hearing that other people really like it too. And so we're going to talk about these 10 must-own progressive rock albums. Okay, so then the last show of the week, uh, which aired two weeks ago for the first time, is now going to be doing its second show which is the psychedelic snack and we'll be using the brother murphy character again he'll be back for his second go at it i enjoyed the part um i don't want the psychedelic snack to be a, a serious sorry i didn't want the psychedelic snack to be a serious show i do enough serious shows this one Although I do like psychedelic music quite a bit, I don't want it to be taken overly serious, so I hope nobody is. It's just supposed to be fun, and so we'll be doing the Brother Murphy character again. I do have four or five other characters that will eventually do some episodes of this show, if the show lasts, of course. Um, because I'm, uh, as people will tell you who know me, I'm a real character. <laughs> I, I can do a lot of voices and imitations of people that people love that makes them laugh. And so um, I, I figured that since I have the ability to do that, I should share it with other people. And so that's what we're gonna do. So for the psychedelic snack this week, of course, we're going to be doing, um, we're gonna be doing a band, but we're only gonna be doing two particular albums. I wanted to talk about two particular albums by this band that I think uh, fall well within the category of the psychedelic snack and that is this band the Beatles and their Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band great album 
and this particular album, Revolver. I could have thrown uh, um, Rubber Soul in there too, but I think we'll just stick with the two albums. Um, wearing those psychedelic glasses makes it hard to see anything, so <laughs> I'm going to have to make sure I change up the way I do it this week because I couldn't see nothing with those glasses on. So at any rate, we'll be back with um, the psychedelic snack this week. Let's have some fun. Let's enjoy the Let's just enjoy the show and try to have some fun with it. Okay, so that's it for the shows this week. Um, there may be a couple of what's new. I'm really falling behind on this what's new thing. I didn't really think it through too clearly. I guess I could have done what other people did, which is just give a general view of about a dozen albums at once. But that's not the way I operate. I, I like to talk about an album at length. And... Um, so we'll be doing a couple this week. I'm not sure which ones. I'm uh, still trying to get through the early ones because there's a lot of really stuff that I really want to talk about coming up. The Yes album, the Jethro Tull album, you know, there's there's that stuff that uh, consideration. I did get one of the albums from the review. That's the um, Riverside album. I do have it. And that'll be part of the halls at the end of the month. You'll get to see that. Some of the stuff you'll probably get to see earlier, but for the most part, the, as you can see up there, the this one right here this is my cat this is my new stuff that I got in this month I did a lot of ordering from Laser's Edge and got some fantastic stuff I'm so happy with uh, the stuff comes from them are always really good unfortunately my bank bank wallet has taken a huge bounce so it won't be much stuff for next month but sometimes we get carried away right and what else is happening of course the series uh, as many of you have been following, I've been surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised with the number of views that I've gotten for this dynamic duo. Um, there'll be some that won't get in there. Some people are not going to understand certain people I put on there, why I put them on. you got to remember, this is just my own perspective. These are just the ones that have influenced me or I have enjoyed at some length. They're my favorites, in, 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 in other words. I tried to stay away from dynamic duels where the vocalist was also a major instrument player. Example, Getty Lee of Rush. He's a bass player to me who sings. Same with Dennis D. Young of the Sticks. He's a keyboardist who sings. Um, I tried to stick with a guy who was thought of more as a vocalist, you know, and then the guitar player is self-explanatory. So I'm hoping that people are following that and enjoying some of the choices I've made. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of really solid combos like that out there. And um, this is just another chance to give these guys some air so people are thinking about them again, you know. And uh, so onward to, um, we got seven of those this week. I did actually record one. That was the one that I kind of got cross-eyed and there was no vocals you couldn't hear anything I was saying it was all over the place so I just erased it and we'll do it again um, starting uh, later today I'm going to start with them anyways I hope that you uh, enjoyed this aspect of the show too I hope that the series is something that you're interested in there won't be any series for the month of May June July and probably August as I'm going to be doing some kind of um some rock legend stuff that I wanted to do. I may actually explore a couple of other ideas that I have. Well, we, we will probably come back in September. It all depends on um, my current living situation here. Uh, that might change as well. I'm going on holidays in June, so I won't be a, there will be a couple of weeks where there won't be a show, or there may be a few shows, but there won't be the normal uh, scheduled stuff. Um, because it's just difficult to do when you're out there, you're thinking about all that stuff. So, yeah, there'll be a couple of weeks there where I won't be because I'm going on holidays, but for the most part, we will continue along doing what we're doing. Um, I think some of you have enjoyed my psychedelic poster I put up here, which will come out for the psychedelic snack. Um, I'm trying to make the show a little bit more lively and presentable it's always an improvement and this also this time without a series would give me a chance to explore the use of my computer which uh, many of you probably figured it out already that I'm a little computer challenged I'm actually much better than I ever was but 
Um, I want to learn all the ropes on my new computer so that I can start using that. The one I'm using isn't bad, but this new one is a much better model and I think will make for a better video, make for a better volume, make for a better lot, a lot of things, bigger screen as well. And I'm hoping that I can learn to do that so we can use that in the future. Okay, so what else is there coming up? Anything that uh, I'm forgetting? I cannot think of anything offhand. Of course, the hauls will come out, but that'll be uh, the following week. Um, um, hmm, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else to say today. And probably I've already said far more than anybody wants to hear. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoy the aspects of the shows that I'm doing. If you do, please like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. Everything's going well. Um, I've had some uh, people with their own TV uh, channels coming on here now and uh, subscribing to me. And I've gone and checked out some of their sites. So it's good to get um, part of that community so you can, you know, I'm eventually I'm going to do a part where I start having guests on the show once I uh, get myself more comfortable with that aspect of it. And some of these people may end up coming on my show or I may end up going on their show. I'm not sure how that'll work. But um, it would be interesting to, uh, it's interesting for you to have more than one opinion as well. So anyways, I hope you have a great day and are able to come out and uh, support my channel and, uh, and enjoy what we're doing here on the Prog Monster. So have yourself a good evening. Take care. Bye.